I'm here with Dave of Jungle Raw to talk about a call to arms mm-hmm. out May 13th on Unique Leader Records. How's it going with you? Good. I'm doing good. Uh, it's raining here today. We've gotten a lot of rain going on. I live in Wisconsin. The weather's been up and down 40 one day, 60 the next day, and now it's raining. But I think another week we're going to start hitting like 60, 70s. I'm ready for the warm. We had a snowstorm yesterday. Where are you out of? In Toronto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> yeah, you still got a little bit more winter, I hate to say. Another yeah, two, still, five, another three weeks, right? I think we still have a little bit of winter left. Yeah, Definitely. you, you Definitely. probably don't get the warm till the end of May, huh? Uh, May you guys get, more yeah. like the beginning of July. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Canada, though. I, I love Canada. One of my favorite countries. Uh, when it comes to a call to arms, did you set goals... Uh, for you or the band in terms of what you wanted this album to turn out to be? Uh, not really, man. You know, you always sold goals. I think the only goals that were set were you just trying to try to be better than the last one, I guess. You always want the next album to be better than the last album. But we've been doing this for so long and I've been writing so much. We have such a formula that works for us, a strict line, the way we do it, you know, and everyone's got a job now and that's what kind of makes it work for us. You know, they've been with me for a while now and everybody knows the style. And I think we really got a groove going, man. We're, we really got a good stride going on the last two albums. I think it's something, we got something good. You, you mentioned you have a little bit of a formula. So is, is the creative process have stayed the same throughout the years or, or do you tweak it a little bit here and there, depending on what the demands are time-wise or even from a record perspective? No, I kind of, Tweaking it is more or less, if anything, tweaking would be pushing the drummer just to push him to his max, you know, get him to work harder, you know, to keep him on his toes. That's probably much about it. But as for writing, I never really listened to a lot of music. I still listen to all the old school. That's about it. My heart's with all that old school. It stole it in the beginning. So I kind of stick to myself and I really don't get the, you know, contagious or what's out there today. So I'm changing my style. It really keeps me just to what I do, you know, and I think that's a key to keeping the solid jungle rot sound. You know, it's hard to say that. I always said we should be applauded to keep that old school sound. We never changed, you know, we always stay, been the same. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it, you know, it's not easy to do. That's for sure. <laughs> it's consistent and it is jungle rot. Right. So, I mean, if, if that's what you're going for, you're, you're definitely delivering. And I don't think you can be criticized for it. Other bands have done it. Look at Slayer, for example. It's not like they exactly. It's not like they went prog halfway throughout their career. Right. I've always used Slayer for a career. I've always said, you know, a band like that, you know, staying true. They're, they're the one of the bands that stayed true their whole self through their career, and that's something to say. You know, it really is. When it comes down to writing a record, do you work on the individual songs without really thinking about what the collective is going to be like? Or in the back of your mind, you're always thinking of right, about the right pieces that you need in order to then create the full picture that is a full-length album. Yeah, writing is weird, man. When I get into Bombero and I write all the music, and uh, it's like I always try to explain when I write, man. I pick up the guitar every day. I play every day, and guitar players can relate to this. You know, we'll we'll pick up the guitar and we'll play those changes when we first start playing, the ones that stick in your head, and you always have changes. and. Every day I re- put changes on my phone and just, you know, I log them on there, but it's weird, man. The ones that stick to your head when you pick up your guitar every day, they just, they're always there. I mean, the ones you know that are good, you always go back to them. And then one day it just happens, man. The magic just happens when you it just, I don't know how it happens, but stuff just starts going together because you have all these changes and it just happens. It comes together. It, you know, we don't really try to struggle when we write, you know, you can see we're real, basic we like that you know and uh we try to have fun when we write you know our songs ain't complicated we like to bust them out and keep them under three and a half minutes and move on to the next one you know we like that right you know big impact right away and move on you know but but i think overall and i I see that on this record it it makes the album a little bit easier to listen to do you know what i mean because uh, you you get that quick hit of, of a track but then you're moving on to the next one so it's not like it stays on for too long and it overburdens the listener. I agree. With perhaps unnecessary shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, right to the point. I mean, enough to get your heart right up and bring it back down and get your breath, right? <laughs> uh, th- this record, uh, you mentioned earlier that you keep the formula very, very steady from beginning to end. But at the same time, like you said, the next record, you always try to make it the best record. So where do you find the balance between that? Do you see something on this album that maybe it's a little bit unique to it that the other records didn't have as much of? 
Uh, I wish I could say I, I do, but I really don't. It kind of just seems like straight up jungle rock, you know. I hate saying that because it kind of like sounds like it hurts the band, man. But it's what we are, you know. I, you know, we're in the pocket band, you know, very groovy. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with it. We just kind of bring them strong points out on every record, you know. And I think we've been doing a lot of those grooves a lot before a lot of bands. I mean, I mean, we've been grooving since 95, you know. <laughs> I mean, but we are what we are, you know. I enjoy what we do. I really do. One of the main things of this album that really took me back that I, I felt that was so good on this record is the fact that the album is super aggressive. It's super intense. It's super aggressive. It's heavy. Like you said, very groovy. But it's not necessarily in your face or getting shoved down your throat. As the listener, I felt the heaviness of the album, but I also felt that there was a little bit of separation between me in that heaviness so that allowed me to better appreciate the album and by the time i reached the end i was like you know what i'm ready to go back for it again because it does it didn't it, it that's kind of it didn't that's kind of how would, it's kind of what i was going for it's kind of a little shorter it's just i think it's just over three 30 minutes ain't it something like a 32 minutes i was kind of minutes or something like that 34 yeah and that was exactly what i was going for you nailed it man and you know we wanted to make the the, the kind of way I picked the order of the songs and everything, I kind of, you felt it just like what I felt. When I listened to it, it's kind of like I want to start over and listen to it again for some reason. I don't know. It, it was good and it wasn't long enough, but it, it seemed like it was just right, you know, because you wanted more and left you want more, right? Exactly. I, mean, I got the same feeling. I really did. I got the same feeling when I did the tracking. I really did. And when, when it comes to albums like this, you not always see that. Sometimes the album overstays its welcome, but I felt like the combination of the of the album being short and the combination of the sound while being aggressive, not necessarily being right on top of me, al allow the record to have a lot more life and be more enjoyable all around. You can really appreciate the album a lot more. I agree. You know, I always wanted when I picked those albums, when I picked the songs and stuff too, I never wanted to be one of those bands that like when you put song one on, it sounds like it's all the way to sound 10, song 10. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I and mean, we don't want to mention bands nothing like that i don't want to be in that category a lot of that i respect it but with the genre rock band it seems like we always put out 10 songs 11 on the album and there's always a variety that somebody's going to enjoy they're never the same man they never sell similar to the same they're all different in their own little spectrum man and there's always two or three that somebody's going to grab onto and hook and it'll take their soul you know and i think the length of time plays into that as well because some mm -hmm. albums when they go over the 45 40 minute mark 45 minute mark you start to get into that world where the first song starts to sound exactly like the last yeah. song. <laughs> and and you sit there and you're like, well, that was a good album, but I can't even tell the first from the last. It all sounds yep. kind of the same. You know, that's exactly what I'm talking about. We, <laughs> we've been listening to a lot of music, both of us. We know. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the great thing about this album. I thought you guys absolutely nailed it from that perspective. You made a record that has an impact, that that it's strong, but, but doesn't overstay its welcome. And that, to me, is a great sign, not just of the sound, but how you structure the songs the mm -hmm. order of the tracks how much time do you spend yeah. on that uh i'm not i think it was a third time around third time around i put the list together in the studio with the, uh, chris wisco the producer and uh three three times you know i knew i wanted to call it arms open up with i thought that was a great one let's yeah, go yeah. man call it you know <laughs> and then it just kind of i wanted to go into a groove one after that you know kind of it just felt it's it spoke to us it kind of really did man it just kind of it was really easy this was one of the easiest ones to put together it really was now the bass really pops on this record what, what, what do you feel the when when you have an album that's this aggressive this heavy and then allowing the bass to actually be heard what kind of impact do you feel that gives to an album a lot man <laughs> i mean you know this band's a lot of bottom men i like that man this, and this album here what we're going for the last album the self-titled we love man you know dan swano did it great job he's one of the best i mean mix is a mess and uh last one we really were happy with man and we kind of went off the last mix on the last one because everyone just loved it you know it was a great great album and the only thing we did on this was a little bit more is he gave a little bit more bottom and like you said and it's more guitar driven this one has a little bit yes. more guitar driven and we we're looking for that you know i wanted it to be right in your face man and you know drill those rhythms down in your head and you wake up and you're humming them in your head you know that's what that's kind of what it's got that kind of penetration it, you, you mentioned the guitar rhythms the other thing i noticed about this record is that the guitar tone w w while the songs are different the tone is 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 the red line that connects the first to the last song. Is, is, is that tone going to become the fingerprint of a call to arms? So when you listen to a song, you know it comes from that specific record? Yes, 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 yes. 
I think so. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, it means a lot to me when you can. I've always said a band's kind of made success when somebody can put it in and you know their tone and you just know them by the tone. And and the more and more as we go on the last few albums, I've been hearing that. So I know things are going good because they just know when they hear it before they hear the vocals, they just know by that. Like name that too in the first couple, they know that tone, you know, and that means a lot. It really does it because we're getting an identity now, you know, and I like that. Yeah, it's definitely defining who Jungle Rod is, and I see that coming really together uh, on this record. Now, are are you more comfortable with the mic in hand or the guitar in hand? Uh, actually, I'm getting comfortable with both. I've been doing a lot of guest singing over the years, and you know, I was kind of weird in the beginning, but I'm I, I'm getting good at both now, man. I enjoy it. But I do like the mic. I like getting down on the mic, man. That's my, that's my specialty. <laughs> the, the album was very consistent vocally from start to finish. The, there are some nuances here and there, but it stays very in the pocket. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is that your comfort? Is that where you're comfortable with having that one solid approach? Yeah, and I've always said that's my saying. We're an in-the-pocket band. You know, that's what we are. You know, that's, that's where we're our best. You know, I'm right in the hole, man. <laughs> when it comes to the lyrics, how, how is the process for you? Um, Jimmy, I when I do all the writing, I write all the music and uh, I'll do the mumble tracks, you know, and everything's right on when I send it to Jimmy and Jimmy has a great mind, the weird mind. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he yeah, does I, a good for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, he does a great job at writing them. You know, he took over writing the lyrics back and I think Dead and Buried was the last album I wrote and uh, he took over since then. And, you know, one day I told him, I, I just don't think I can write anymore. I killed everybody. There's nobody else to kill. And then we started taking on other subjects. <laughs> yeah, because that's how it was back then, you know. I said, I don't know, I killed everyone, they're all dead. And then he started taking over. And what's something that he's done the last few albums, if if you noticed, uh, it seems like when he writes, it seems like he's very on top of what the future is when the album comes out. It kind of relates exactly what's happening. He's been nailing that the last couple albums. Yeah, it's like this album was written yesterday. Lyrically, yeah, right. exactly. Like, feels, and he did that on the last, on the yeah, last one as well. You know, what's happening today? Yeah, he's he's uh, he's got a lot to say. That guy, <laughs> he's a savant. He can see into the future. It's scary. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it is. It's pretty amazing. We say that every time. It's, it's the last two albums. He's really nailed it, man. It's pretty cool. Out of these ten tracks, is there a song that stands out to you in terms of maybe the difficulty level that it caused, or maybe it's a little bit more personal to you in terms of how you got to that song? Uh, no, they're all nothing really personal or nothing like that. Just all fun to play. Nothing really came out like that. Not that I think of. Maybe a total instinction. I mean, maybe that one. I mean, nothing that's, you know, that song, we kind of started it and we didn't know if we wanted to finish it or end it. And all of a sudden, you know, the end label ended up picking it to be the, you know, the first one of the single. We weren't, we didn't think that would happen. You know, that's up to them, but it's kind of weird because we always wanted to make it longer, but we're known for them short songs too, you know, and it kind of worked out, I guess, you know. After three decades or nearly three decades of Jungle Rot, what, what keeps you motivated? Mm. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm going to say it's not the money. <laughs> no, it's not, man. It just, I, I still have some dreams and goals I want to achieve, some festivals I like to play. I think there's still some things I want to do, and I'm still chasing them. You know, I think that's got a lot to do with it. We're still, you know, the same guys I've had still have the same goals and dreams, and I think that's what it, what we're doing. We're still here to try to grab them. <laughs> I have one, one last question for you. With the album coming out in May, May 13th, with the summer around the corner, I know the weather here is going to start to get better around June, July. Are we going to see you guys up north in, in Canada and Toronto? Uh, we're hoping to get there working on a second leg right now for August, and um, I'm not sure what the dates are, but we're going to concentrate on North America this whole year, and then uh, I know we got one small, not a small one, a big one, big festival in Mexico in September, but then all international for 23, we're going to concentrate, so pretty much North America this year, and I'm hoping we, I'm pretty, I can't say pretty sure, but I'm sure they'll be on the map, man, we love coming there. All right, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing you in Toronto then. Yeah, we love it, man. Well, thank you all. Thank you for your time, Dave. All the best to you and the guys. All the best with the release. I absolutely love this album from Jungle Rod. I know that everybody always says that the last album is the best album, but I really feel like this is, if not the best, one of the best. Within the genre, I, it's definitely in my top five, maybe even top three so far for the whole year. I don't think there's many albums out there better than what you guys did with A Call to Arms. That's good to hear, man. Not too many people. You, you, I just started doing interviews. You're probably like the fourth or fifth one. So not little. I ain't been hearing any 
outside opinion on it at all. So hearing it is great. You know, I mean, no feedback at all. You're just a couple. So uh, you think we got something good, huh? <laughs> this is a home run. I'm, I'm serious. Within the, within the genre, I, I can only think maybe Emulation was an outstanding album so far this year. Outside of that, you guys are in that conversation. You guys are in that pocket there of, of one of the best top three albums of the year when it comes to death metal. I mean, it's just that good. And it's 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 well it's well written, it's well put together, it's well drafted, it has great sound. And like I said, you want to listen to it again. You don't feel like <laughs> you don't feel like ah, you know that was good, but like let me go do something. Uh, yeah, you yeah. go do something, but you're gonna be listening to it while doing whatever that something is. Yeah, exactly. It means a lot because we're very happy with the self title, and that was a very you know launched a lot, and took us to the next level again. You know, and I really hope that we you know brought this one to the next level as well as to get to the next you know <laughs> we want to keep going you know so that's good to hear man i mean i you know we're a little worried about you know topping that last one you know and you know we thought we had it and now that I'm hearing you, you i think we might have it <laughs> yeah, yeah you do you do this is an outstanding record absolutely I, and i'm not just saying that because you're on on the channel chatting with me i, I honestly mean it like i listen to a lot of music and this album really spoke to me in terms of the sound the quality of the sound everything you guys just have all the right pieces in the right place for, yeah, for phenomenal yeah. we can only hope that the rest of the world can see that see like us right <laughs> and, and, unless they're blind i mean or, or deaf there there's, there's no, so there's, there's no so way much the quality of this record yeah but there's so much good music out there right now man that's the thing there's a lot of good bands going on a lot of good bands i mean don't sell yourself short we're happy to we're, yeah, we're, we're still happy to be here, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't sell your soul shirts. You guys did an amazing job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll see you soon this year, and then we'll, we'll catch up, man. Yeah, we'll definitely catch up in person if you guys make it to Toronto, for sure. Okay. Take I'll, care. I'll have the vinyl in hand for you guys to sign it. Nice. All right. <laughs> Take Cheers. care. Cheers, man. <laughs>